Okay, guys, how unusual for me to go down the rabbit hole. Well, I did some more work to the base, and I really pushed my luck. I used my Sonic to the best of my ability, and uh, we are quite thin at, at several points. This, this area right here is quite thin, because I raised and curved that port best I could. These corners are going to be quite thin. The, the divider between these two ports here is going to be quite thin. What you're looking at here is a piece of my SLPs that I cut open and uh, shortened the divider. And uh, I did a little flow work with this. This doesn't flow nearly as good as you would think it does. In fact, it's, it's horrible. <laughs> but I think I know why. Okay, the, the runner that attaches to number one, you can see it's got a big dent in it. I think that's for the heater hose or something. Well, that intrudes into the port more than I can take out, so that is going to change how it works. You can see I didn't do a super job on it. You can see a couple of ridges in the back there. But uh, it was quite a bit of metal was taken out of these, and they still are pretty horrible. I think they're SLPs. I see BB on them. I don't really see any other markings. I did a flow test with these all attached as well. But I didn't put any clay around them because the clay is too... There's not enough metal to bite on the clay. So they were all tested without a radius, which makes a difference. All right, guys. I don't know how much different this is going to look than last time you've seen it. But this has been blended from the round to the semi-square. It's not really that square anymore guys see in there a little bit more. I did what I could to make this section more of an oval. Why would I do that? Well, oval flows better than square. Okay, so you keep the radius as big as possible, right? Take very little, if any, metal off of that. Take a little bit more off the center. You do that on all, all four sides and it makes it a more efficient shape. Now, did that help our flow numbers? We'll go over that. This wall here, same idea, but we, we push our luck on this and we make this as straight a run as we can without breaking through. This wall, we didn't, we didn't take any metal off of because it's already slow. If we take more metal out of it, it'll slow it down even more. As far as the roof here, relatively thin. Okay, the only really thin spot is up is up here at the turn. Let's take a look at that. Okay, guys. Now it probably doesn't look that much different than last time you've seen it, because the amount of metal you can take off isn't really going to show up on camera. Okay, but it's the same idea, really. This has been moved as far over as I can. Make that wall as straight as possible. There's a big chunk of aluminum here, so you can put a little roundness here to start aiming the port more into the head than coming in at such a tight angle. But right after that lump, right here, very thin. Okay. Now, it doesn't look that much different than straight, so let's put a straight edge on it and you can see. Okay, I've got a two-handed for you guys. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Let's see if we can blow that up. I think you can see that now. It's 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 got a nice curve. It's got a nice curve right here. Okay. See if I can move that light. Okay, hopefully we can see it at this angle. It's tough for me to do, but okay, you get an idea now how much that's been curved. Okay, figure about a hundredth of uh, a 
hundredth, a tenth of an inch, hundred thousandths. So what did that do with our flows? It didn't make a huge difference. We topped out at 273, and that was about 0.575 lift. It was 270 at 600. It was 260.4500. Now the big difference is in our air speeds. And it's always interesting when you do airspeed uh, numbers like this and what you're trying to do and what you're trying to accomplish. We're trying to do two different things at the same time, which is not the easiest thing in the world, right? We're trying to get more mass flow, and we're trying to even out the speeds in the runners the best we can. So this is when it flowed 265 through the runners. Okay, here we flowed 272, 273. I put pluses and minuses in here, right? To go over it a little quicker. Plus, minus, plus, minus. Relatively even. More even than... No, it's about the same, right? 355, 352, 2. Very close. Didn't change that much. All right, how did we do on B? Plus plus, minus, minus. All right, that went down a good, went down a good amount, went down a good amount, almost identical. Came up quite a bit. It was very slow over here, right? The more efficiently you make the port, the more even everything will be. At least that's my theory. One of the, uh, I've actually heard someone, I guess it was Darren, I think it was Darren. And uh, how did he put it? The closer you can get the localized velocity gradient or differential, the better off you are. I think that's how he said it. In any case, yeah, you want to make those those speeds as even as you can. All right, let's take a look at D. All right, D is that wall. How'd we do? This says minus, but in reality, this is a plus. Okay. So we got plus, plus, minus, plus. Only a small uh, minus. Okay. And how do we do on C, which is our roof? Plus, plus, minus, plus, plus. I didn't do the averages, but I'm thinking this is a little bit better and more efficient. And we are getting a few extra CFM through it. So I think that's going to make a difference. Now, just for fun, I decided to put some runners on it. I have a completely stock set of TPI runners. And this is exactly how it was tested because I wasn't gonna, going to put clay on the other ones. So it's not fair if I put clay on this one. Okay, completely stock, lumps, bumps, and sharp edges inside. Okay. That edge looks worse than it is. It's really not that big an edge. And you do have to be careful because this is an extremely thin piece of tubing. So you can't grind that all away and they'll fall apart. So you can radius a little bit. These, these have been radiused. And that also went into my plenum that is Siamese at that point. So I could put a, I could put a nice radius here. Now the reason these flow so much better than these is one, our opening is bigger, right? It's rounded. That's going to make a huge difference. They're, they're as even as I could make it at the outlet, and the centers are completely stock. So we run the stockers against the SLPs and the cut up SLPs. Now I did it all at the same lift point, about 600 lift on all of them. Let's see how they did. It might surprise you. Okay, so we going through the base, we're at 272, 273. 0.6 inch lift, completely stock. We get 208.2. You can get a good amount of horsepower through that. The air speeds are going to be banging through that, right? Ported stocker, which is this guy right here. 228.4, by far our winner. The SLP that's not cut in half, 210, and it's had a ton of work done to it. It barely beats 
the stalker and it gets stomped by the ported stalker. Okay. And our cut up SLP, but it's only I should have I should have showed you. It's only this piece, okay? So it's shorter. It's shorter. So by by in it having less runner length is less resistance to flow. Okay? It also has a relatively sharp edge. And if you take a look inside it, it's very, very much a D-shape. I, I took as much metal out of the center as I could because that's where the air wants to go. So it really should flow really well, right? No. 227. SLP cut up, ported. And then I threw, I threw the top on. Trying to remember. 213. I didn't write it down. It's only at 213. We should put that down. Okay, so the one that was cut up, yeah, I also have to remember, right? And everything doesn't match exactly perfect. It would need to be welded up to really look good. And it does have it does have this good sized dent in that runner, which is definitely going to affect it. My stockers are not perfect. This is actually the one we flowed through, and it has a, a similar dent. I don't think that's a factory dent. It has a similar dent to this. It's not quite as deep, but these runners are much smaller. Okay, guys. So, as far as my texture, this is about as smooth as I'm going to make these. It looks rough, right? It's really not. It's actually extremely smooth to the touch. And it actually flows better than polished. I've, do, I've done the tests. That is a really sweet uh, finish before you introduce fuel. You don't want that after you introduce fuel. Okay, and that's my high helix. My high helix burr with, at a special RPM. And it turns out really nice. So... These runners were completely ported with that, that burr. Okay, you can see by that line, it's not completely perfect, but it's got a decent shape all the way to the end. Okay. These have quite a few hours of work in them. I actually, uh, I started a time card on them. Because they, I know they had a ton of work before I started uh, this new TPI project. So it's interesting how much of my life I can waste just doing an experiment and trying out a couple things. I have to do it that way, otherwise I can't learn. I can't learn off a blackboard. Never could. It's called kinesthetic learner. In order to learn anything, I basically have to take things apart and figure it out not necessarily good when you're working on big stuff <laughs> that's not yours uh, i hate directions in any case i've gotten through so far all right guys thanks for hanging out the tpi stuff is supposedly is either shipped or will be shipped tomorrow and uh Right after that happens, I'm thinking maybe taking a day or two off so I can get a decent amount of work done on them quick before the garage is too hot to work in. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.